the Smashing Pumpkins, A Tomb, Act 3, album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this final act of this latest three-disc album from alternative rock legends the smashing pumpkins billy corgan and company are back at it again uh, releasing the final and third disc of this trilogy um i mean i'm gonna keep it short and sweet because we've been chatting about them pumpkins quite a bit lately because of this trilogy but if you are just watching this video for the first time in this trilogy of reviews the smashing pumpkins are a band that at one point were the most important band in the world and to me anything that they released between gish and adore i absolutely obsessed over whether it be b-sides live stuff rarities covers and more i was absolutely obsessed with their output it spoke to me like a lot of music at the time just was not speaking to me now we all know the story of the breakup the semi-reunion the egos involved the god just all the drama between uh members of the smashing pumpkins and a couple of years ago uh they said they were going to be putting out this trilogy uh, this autumn or a tomb trilogy whatever you want to call it and let me catch you up to speed the first act that dropped late last year um God, if that Turnover album did not come out, this was going to be my worst album of the year. This, to me, was the pinnacle of Billy's ego getting in the way of anything nice happening on this album. So much of this album was bloated, full of itself, completely blown out of proportions, and just incredibly boring. <clears throat> now, I give credit where it's due. I said it when it came out, and I stand by it. Uh, the second disc to this album... I was actually quite surprised with. It wasn't good by any means, but uh, the majority of the material here, or at least I should say more of the material on this album, uh, to me, spoke to me. It sounded to me more like Billy's ridiculous vision come to life in an actually, you know, plausible way that I could actually stomach for a couple of minutes. It wasn't perfect, but I thought it was a big improvement, which leads me to Act 3. <clears throat> and you know, I almost didn't review this. I almost just wrote this off my calendar, but at this point, I'm two volumes of this three-volume trilogy in, and you know what? <sighs> what am I going to do? Not review it at this point. I didn't hear no bell. Let's chat about this third disc. This album starts off with Sojourner, and you know, I, I just I thought that I was ready to review this. I thought that I would be able to stomach at least a good hunk of what was going on here. But right off the bat, what 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 is going on? We are gifted with an intro here that is over eight minutes long. It is a bloated mess and way too full of itself for its own good. Uh, Billy's performance is absolutely uh, bottom of the barrel. And for everything that seems to be going on on this track, I would argue that if you just scrape up a little bit of a layer, there is nothing going on underneath. It is so beyond half-assed. And this is the intro that we get here. And the expanded synth solos. And the group backing vocals add nothing. This volume is not good. Uh, Pacer is even worse because this track... It's got a little funk to it. There's some funky synths on this track, and it's it's kind of as ugly as it sounds. Uh, Billy just sounds lost here. This track just sounds directionless as a whole. It's it's rough. Uh, the atmosphere is just completely uh, a hazy, bloated mess, and this instrumental is just as lost as everything else here. It is devoid of any substance whatsoever. And by the way, this is another plus five minute track that's right billy and company thought that this the third disc of this trilogy decided this needs to be the longest one of the ball and you know what a few years ago i would have given this track a pass because it does pick up a little it gets a little oomph to it but it just has no direction whatsoever and by the end of this track these synths are literally one of the most annoying things in music i've heard all year in lieu of failure, I, once again, I feel like if this came around four years ago, I would have given this track a pass, because it is heavier. But this chugging riff and completely uninspired vocal performance can just go away. I mean, I don't know why Billy here is literally diving so hard back into an alternative rock sound and trying to reinvent himself. Uh, he doesn't sound good doing it. It's completely heartless, and this chorus, I, I, I could write better in my sleep. And with Cenotaph, 
Uh, we get a stripped down ballad that sounds like Billy Corgan trying to rewrite his own version of Starman. And I have nothing to say about it. It's passionless. It's full of itself. It is. It is garbage. Now, I'm not going to bash this album for no reason. And as always, I give credit where it's due. That which animates the spirit, it's not that bad. And listen, maybe it's a case of Stockholm Syndrome. Maybe it's a case of it's just a little bit better than a lot of the other material here. But I don't like that. But I don't mind this track at all. There's some passion here. There is some heartfelt performances. It's got that triumphant riff, and for a few minutes, Billy sounds totally invested. And listen, clearly this album is not very good overall, but I salute uh, where, you know, credit is due, where credit is due. I salute this track. Uh, for a few short minutes, much like the decent material in Act 2, I for a few minutes I get Billy's vision for this, and it actually seems kind of palpable. And while I'm handing out positives, uh, the Canary Trainer's not that bad either. Uh, this is easily one of the most whimsical and truly enchanting tracks here. I love the pounding drums, the soaring synths that we get here, and Billy's mind just seems like it's in a good place. I mean, I still would swear that if you took like the five good tracks from Act 2, the two or three from Act 1, and whatever material that you could discourage on this album, y you might have a decent record, maybe not a perfect one, but one that you could probably sit through. But clearly, that is not what we're getting on this trilogy, but for a few short minutes, the Canary Trainer actually gives me the chills. I mean, it's infinitely frustrating when you hear some of the later tracks on this album, but for a moment, I'm happy. And as far as a synth-driven track goes, uh, Fireflies might be one of the best tracks on this entire three-disc album. It's got that sense of whimsicality to it. It's got that sense of mystery once again. It's really decent. It's got the drama. It's got the intensity. It's well thought out. Uh, Billy just, this sounds like where he wants this album to be. And it's nothing too fancy or extravagant either. It's just focused and heartfelt. I can't really ask for more. Oh, Jesus. Christ, but it, it just, it gets worse. I didn't think it could get worse, but it really does get worse. Harmageddon is probably the heaviest track here, but I do really think that we have reached the absolute bottom of the barrel with this track. This chugging riff, while it is heavier, easily one of the most obnoxious things about this entire project. Uh, this chorus is just so annoying, and there's so many little details on this track that are just grating. Uh, I literally almost stopped uh, listening to this album and just cut the review here originally. Oh boy, but then we get Intergalactic, another nine-minute odyssey. I mean, what could possibly go wrong here? Oh no, it's, it's Billy's ego. It is amazing in this nine-minute track how little progression there actually is here. And listen, I'm a patient man. I don't mind sitting around and waiting for something that's actually going to blow me away. But within this track, we get zero drama, zero grit, zero progression. This is what happens when you don't have somebody in the studio with Billy Corgan and the Smashing Pumpkin saying, no, don't do that. Uh, the only thing that is really holding me back from naming this the worst track on the album it would genuinely be Jimmy Chamberlain's drum solo here. I mean... He, he brought his work shoots. He, he really knocked it out of the park here. It may be the most impressive aspect about this entire project as a whole. Uh, he sounds like he's got plenty of juice left in him. I wish he'd let him do his thing a little bit more. But then we have Spellbinding. I haven't been into this since it dropped as a single. It is way too upbeat and sunny and peppy. I, I, it just it confuses me even more just because so much of this three disc trilogy has been Billy just building up this massive synth odyssey and pushing away everything that's made the Smashing Pumpkins themselves. Uh, this just goes through the entire aesthetic of this album, which, you know, I'm not into it, but it certainly does have an, an aesthetic, uh, but it just like disregards it and pushes it against it and the result is really confusing and awkward and not good and as a finale we get of wings god this trilogy of albums you know it's been spaced out by a few months but i'm still exhausted right now uh, this track is heartless as a finale it is five minutes of fluttering vocals phoned in lyricism zero elegance it is all just like burning my brain and I'm just I'm shot I, I'm, I'm done 
uh, this this you know I had some hope for this a album this this third portion after I did enjoy more parts to the second act but this third act it is such garbage it is such crap I mean it, I still think that the first act was even worse but this is certainly giving it a run for its money. So much of this album is bloated and full of itself and confused and directionless and just phoned in, completely phoned in. And maybe you enjoy this trilogy more than me. But right now, this third act, it's, um, it's, uh, it is not good. It's actually a, a big steaming pile of garbage I'm, I'm feeling a strong two on this third act and you know what just for fun just just for shits and giggles if I'm going to rate the autumn or a tomb or whatever you want to call it, it trilogy the, in all of its three acts if you really want me to do that feeling a strong three just stay away just don't do it to yourselves. Don't make the same mistake that I made. I need to go and take a very long nap. But let me know what you all think down below. If you like this video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.